Hello, Classic Rock fans. I am reporting live after seeing Molly Hatchett play at the Northern Lights Theater at Potawatomi Casino in Milwaukee. Potawatomi Casino and the Northern Lights Theater, in my opinion, is the best venue in Milwaukee to see live music. It's my favorite place to go see a show. Uh, I haven't seen too many shows there, but it is always a treat when I get a chance to go there because there's not a bad seat in the house, the sound is really good, and it's just a very intimate environment. So even if you have the seats way in the back, you feel relatively close to the band. As far as the band I saw tonight goes, Molly Hatchet was awesome. I've said before, I'm a big fan of Southern Rock. Uh, subscribers to this channel might remember that I saw the Marshall Tucker Band earlier this year, and I hate to say it, that show was a, a little bit of a disappointment, but that was not the case tonight. Molly Hatchet killed it. That was a really fun show. Basically, uh, if you don't know, Molly Hatchet is one of those classic Southern Rock bands in the vein of uh, Leonard Skinner or 38 Special, Marshall Tucker, and they had a, a string of albums um, starting in the early 80s, and these albums are iconic not just for the songs that are on them, but for this just incredible artwork. Molly Hatchet as a band has some of the most iconic album artwork, um, sort of in the same vein as like Meatloaf or Asia. Almost all of their old albums use this famous Frank Frazetta artwork that was also used on stuff like Conan the Barbarian novels. It's super recognizable. If you saw it, you would know it. And not all of their albums have that artwork, but most of their albums, even in later years, sort of capture that same spirit, that same vibe, very like Viking warrior type of thing. Very cool, aesthetically very cool, and it's, it's great music, you know, to go along with it. And the show was great. Uh, they played a, you know, all their big hits, plus some interesting covers. One of the covers early in the night was that song, I Used to Love Her, But It's All Over Now. Uh, the Rolling Stones famously covered that song. Well, Molly Hatchet has a, a pretty famous cover version of that as well, and that's a great rockin' tune. They played that early in the night. Later in the show, they covered uh, Eric Clapton's Layla, um, but sort of the back half of Layla. Kind of like if you've seen the, the movie Goodfellas, it's like the outro of Layla. Uh, they played that uh, today as well, but they played it for a special reason, which I thought was cool. They dedicated uh, their cover of Layla to all of the past members of Molly Hatchet who have, sadly, passed away. And unfortunately, that's not exactly a short list. This band has definitely had some lineup turmoil, and a lot of guys who used to play with this band are no longer with us. So for them to give their past members a shout out and a tribute, in a show uh, like tonight, I thought was very cool. I and mean, it's a great song to do it to. And, you know, people had their phones up like lighters. It was a good vibe. I, I, I like to see that. And then the surprise tribute slash cover of the night was uh, a song dedicated to Jerry Lee Lewis. So I'm recording this on the day that Jerry Lee Lewis passed away. And Jerry Lee Lewis is one of the great grandfathers of rock and roll, and he is definitely a huge influence over Southern Rock. And I guess he had some sort of relationship with the band because uh, they said he was a friend and supporter of theirs and he was important to them. Jerry's been a friend of the band for many, many years. We love him, we miss him, but his music is going to live on. So they did kind of a short version of uh, Great Balls of Fire. And that was a real surprise and a treat right at the end of the show. They did that as part of the encore along with their, of course, most iconic hit, Flirtin' with Disaster. Flirtin' with Disaster, as far as I'm concerned, is in the elite tier of Southern Rock. It's right up there with Sweet Home Alabama and Hold On Loosely. You know, it, it, it is one of the signature songs of the genre. And hearing that live uh, tonight was awesome. It's just such a great song. And... You know, their their new lead singer has not been with them for very long, I don't believe, but uh, he was very good, and he sounded like the old records. And, you know, he talked to the crowd in between songs, and he seemed very cool. You know, it's funny, he had that same sort of southern draw as uh, Doug Gray from Marshall Tucker Band, but 
he was a little a little more clear and a little a little funnier a little more direct he did not ramble um so, so very entertaining great guy they got up front i think uh, the main guy in the band is Bobby Ingram on guitar. I believe he's the band leader now. He's been with them, I guess, for the last 35 years or so. He had a couple of guitar solos through the night uh, that were just awesome. The rest of the band played really well. I got a kick out of uh, the drummer. The drummer must have had some fans sort of underneath him because his hair, his long hair, was up and uh, just flying all over the place all night. It was a great visual. Uh, absolutely a lot of fun. Um, a couple of other songs that you might not know, but are definitely worth checking out, one of which is called Fall of the Peacemakers, which I believe was originally written as a bit of a tribute to John Lennon. Uh, there's some references to Lennon in the lyrics, and it's basically a tribute song. It's a salute song. And they've, you know, uh, added some meaning to it because um, before they played it, uh, one of the guys in the band brought out this big American flag, and the band took a minute to talk about how they've recently played overseas for our armed forces in the Middle East, uh, and they dedicated the song to the troops. Uh, you know, they talked about how important, you know, people in the service are to them. They're definitely a band that has a lot of uh, fans that are in the military, and you can kind of tell because they have a lot of songs that are just about war or battles, you know. Uh, it's uh, old school, so, sort of like old school metal. Iron Maiden's a lot like that too, so I, I, I this is part of why I like that band. It's <laughs> um, interesting lyrics on, on, on some of their songs, which makes for a lot of fun. But yeah, a very patriotic show, which I thought was a nice touch. Another song I want to highlight of theirs is from their latest album. This is the album that they're still promoting. They, it was originally released in 2019. It's called Battleground. It's a live album. And the single off that album is a track called uh, Devil's Canyon. And I think that's a really good song here. Take a listen. This is for, from tonight. Well, So yeah, this is from the new album. I think it sounds really good. They played a couple of other songs that are also on this Battleground record. Uh, I enjoyed that. I think they're still making pretty good, like consistently good music all these years into their career. I mean, Molly Hatchet sort of reminds me of ACDC in the sense that, yes, a lot of their songs sound fairly similar, uh, but the, that means the quality is very consistent. You know, I don't think a... a bad Molly Hatchet record is really all that worse than a good one. I think they're a very consistent band. And, you know, you can knock them for that if you want, but I like the sound that they make, so I, I'm okay with it. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed uh, the songs tonight. So, speaking of that new album, Battleground, it is a, I think, a triple record or a, in a double CD or something. They were, they, they were talking about it on stage, and, you know, it, it reminded me, like, oh, yeah. I, I do like that record. I should go over to the merch table and buy a copy. And this brings me to my one complaint uh, of the show. The merch selection was, I hate to say it, the worst I've ever seen. And I don't think I'm picking on them when I say that. Because here, I'm going to show you the one thing, one item they had on, on the, the stand. It is a plain white tee with... One of uh, their album covers, this is, uh, I believe, their debut album cover. Uh, it's the f famous uh, Frank Frazetta Death Dealer uh, thing. But no tour dates on the back, even. It's just a plain white t-shirt with uh, one of the album covers. I'm sorry, guys. You got to do a little better than that, you know? <laughs> Give us something, you know? Put, put the tour dates on the shirt or... You know, if, if they had been selling, like, signed CDs of the new album, I absolutely would have bought that. In fact, I was really kind of hoping they would have something like that. It, especially because, like I was saying, this is a band known for their awesome visual artwork. You know, having some cool merch out there I think would be kind of a no-brainer. I don't know if that's the band's fault or maybe their uh, promoter or, or whatever, but uh, I hope that next time they're in town they beef up the uh, merch uh, section. Because, you know, that's that's still a staple of, of concerts for people. You know, and I, and I will say, even though it's just the one shirt, I bought it because uh, I do like the artwork. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and a lot of people, I did see a lot of people get the shirt, but I think everybody was thinking like, maybe we could have had a couple more options, but whatever. At the end of the day, the shows are about music, so this complaint isn't really that big of a deal. Um, if Molly Hatchet is coming to your town, I would recommend seeing them, especially if you like bands like Leonard Skinnerd, uh, ZZ Top, uh, Charlie Daniels, Marshall Tucker, 38 Special, you know. If, if Southern Rock is a genre that you could get into, then you should absolutely be aware of Molly Hatchet, and you should go check them out, especially if they come to your town. They're probably going to play a venue where the tickets aren't going to be particularly expensive. This is a mid-level band, and you're probably not going to have to pay a whole bunch to get in the door. And what was really cool about tonight is, you know, one of the themes I've seen repeatedly seeing shows this year is, you know, a lot of empty seats. And talking to Kofi Baker from The Music of Cream earlier this year, you know, a lot of mid-level acts are really having trouble uh, selling tickets in the theaters and the mid-level venues. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what to see with this band, uh, but amazingly, it was a sellout. It was a total sellout. Every seat in the house uh, was filled, and they were very proud of this, and they kept mentioning it on stage, and you know what? Good for them, um, because you cannot take that for granted um, in this sort of post-COVID uh, stretch of time here. So good for them. Hopefully this won't be their only uh, sellout show of the tour. So if Molly Hatcher comes to your town, go see him. Tell me what you think in the comments. I think they're a good band that are worth checking out. I think the new album they have is uh, definitely worth a listen. Um, but with that, that's all I've got to say about uh, the show tonight. I thought it was great. Gets a thumbs up from me. And if you enjoyed this review, please check out the other concert reviews I've done on this channel. I guarantee I've talked about some other band that you like. And if you are a fan of classic rock, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I host a podcast about classic rock. So you uh, might want to check that out too. The link is in the description below, along with links to our social media, Facebook and Twitter. So please check those links out. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Otherwise... Have a good night. See Molly Hatchet if you can. And keep rocking.